Okay, we are finally in the public eye, and of course, of course, we got some bad publicity to work through. What you got? You need to get some more new characters. A few hours pass, during which you detect a new terminal coming online, close to the mine core's office. And I? You see a greasy finger tapping the lens of your camera. Are you on, little fella? You on, little fella? Meat Glue 9000. Oh. Oh, this is... Oh, this is... This is some cyberpunk. Nice little, nice little dive we got here. What does that say? Dry something food. Enter. Come get your meat glue down at Dirt Dan's. I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to think of like some specials. Like, what, 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 what's the menu down at Dirty Dan? Just a box level labeled eatables. <laughs> so you got that you got the dirty dan double. Or the double double the glue, double your meat. You got the uh You got the library stat where they have a glue, a bread. It's meat, bread, meat, bread, meat, bread. Alright. Um and it, the secret menu, you can get an animal style where uh, Dave's little chihuahua will uh, texture-ize the meat. Um, <laughs> we, we, we cook it, we give it to the chihuahua to texturize it, and then we serve it up to you. <laughs> it adds a bit of random extra flavor. There's some extra zing to it. Rich Man's Feast. Just a single slice of wilted lettuce added to your meat. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, Lettuce guaranteed to be at least only two weeks old. So the tapping stops, and you see a large smudged eyeball peering through the lens. I can't see you. Mm, let me grab my glasses. Hello. Take it easy, Rue. You can't see it, but he can see you. Got it. I just tap the glass when I need the filler. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Cheese one. Cheese. You know what? I love this guy. I too would love to have a food truck with drawers. Just this is this is my first drawer full of cheese. This is my second drawer full of cheese. What cheese is that there? Whatever I can afford, man. We've got provolone, we've got cheddar, we've got jack, we've got dam, we've got some bell of the tano, we've got some parmesan. Not not parmesan or reggiano. We're, we're not that rich. This is just 100% imitation parmesan, okay? Nah, you can just talk to it like it's your friend on comps. It can hear you anytime you're in the shop. The other figure finally steps back from the camera and you see him in full. Well, what friends we're gonna be. Isn't that right, Nugget? I love this guy. I love this guy so much. Little Nugget? <laughs> There's no names to the cheese. You know what? You're right, Digital Box. The names have been lost to time. Now they're just known as Cheese 1 and Cheese 2. I hear rich people got them that Cheese 7. That's some premium stuff. I hear, I hear they even use cows to make it. Not any of oh, them, any of them lactose fabricators they got down there in the uh, factory. I'm a nugget. <laughs> the guy erupts in a belly laugh. Around him, you see grill with patties lined up on it. Cows, they exist still. No, no, you're thinking Sasquatches. Uh, or you're thinking cryptids. Cows are like one of those ancient European creatures.
They say the original machines used to be in the shape of the mythological creature, and that's why they call them cows. Are we all, little fella? You see the man retract from view and tend to the burgers. Kairos turns to you. And I miss, there used to be like a food truck that would come by um, once a month um, to like a little area, little intersection with a bunch of uh, apartment complexes. And they had some really fucking bomb diggity barbecue. I haven't seen them come by in a while. In a good few months. I hope it's because they got a permanent location and not that they went out of business because it was a pretty good barbecue. I just don't remember what its okay, name was. I am done here. Let's hope this terminal is grease resistant. I mean, if you suspend the electronics in mineral oil, that is better than water cooling. Grease is close to mineral oil? Not, not really. As he leaves, you see the other man, Rue, assemble a plate of food and serve it to a customer. He gives you an eager thumbs up. Ugh, hot day today, isn't it? Aw, oh, this is dystopic as... Something about... This statue with the mind core on it feels extremely dystopian. Sort of like you have a megacorp uh, presenting itself with the um, not regalness, but sort of like the gravitas of um, old statues. Gravitas may not be the right word I'm thinking of. Sort of like there, there's a certain air of um, seriousness, solemnity, um, you know, that like old marble statue, or at least that's something how I feel, um, like statues kind of give me the impression of, because they're, they're a solid thing. They took a lot of dedicated time to create, so they're kind of, I feel like they lend an air of seriousness to places that they are. But then the holographic fixture to it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the corporal act. Yeah, definitely. Mind core. Your history and your future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I do think it's kind of interesting. Their logo kind of makes me think of a moth. Like there, I don't, I don't know the exact name of it. I actually, I don't even know if it's a moth. There is definitely like a specific bug that I'd seen growing up that I saw growing up very often. It was kind of like a very, very brownish tan wings on its back. Um, I don't know if that's like the exact, if like if it's trying to imitate a specific bug and if it is, and there's like a, you know, one thing that usually cyberpunk games tend to be good at is illusions and usually symbols have multiple meanings or a deeper meaning um so if, if it certainly is that case it's one that's going over the top of my head at the moment um it might, might be something I, I make a note to Google later once I'm done getting through this. Assuming it doesn't, like, explicitly come up in the game itself. Um, I would also want to say I love this person's hairstyle. I am a... I am a absolute... There's two hairstyles that I will freak over. And it's the, like, half undercut, you know, long comb-over kind of thing. And it's pompadours. Which are very conflicting hairstyles. You can't you can't have both. Um, but I also love how I love, I love cyberpunk aesthetics. Uh, I love the colors and the neon. Let's see. Uh, back to the game. Uh, seed clouds. You deploy weather drones to seed clouds in the sky. 
By afternoon, it is thoroughly overcast, much to the disappointment of many. Fuck you guys. Overcast and rainy is the best weather. People are really worried you'll make them redundant. We need a public statement from you to reassure them. What will you say? Technological unemployment. Long ago, workers who felt their livelihood threatened by automation flung their wood shoes called sabbath sabbaths into machines to stop them. Hence the word sabotage. <sighs> Ooh. So this is a very important topic when it comes to automation because even though automation means you can do more labor with less people, there is a problem where those production gains are realized by the business owners and not labor force themselves. Um, we don't know if there is any kind of universal basic income here, but it being pretty far on the cyberpunk scale so far, I think it's safe to assume there is no UBI. Um, so that's not so great. I would also say this actually reminds me, I actually ran into something similar to this um, some time ago. Basically, there were a large group of people employed to do something that, um, you know, I was familiar with a machine that would do it simply. And one time I, I remember I remember asking one of our um, one of the seniors like, hey, you know, why don't we just, you know, dip in this and then we would only have a few people and they're like oh that's because they'll destroy it someone will sabotage it because you know we're employing this many people and it's actually you know even though we're not paying a lot it's compared to the local economy it is a significant income and so it is you know even though we're paying you know we're paying xxx dollars um it's better to do that than to damage public opinion by only paying XX dollars from having the machine and fewer people. Because, you know, this is still absolutely valid today, not just way back when in the industrial era. Um, it's frustrating that universal income is not standard which causes advancements in automation to harm the labor class more than it should um, it's it's a very frustrating um, dichotomy especially as someone who has lived and breathed tech um, literally automating people out of jobs or automating yourself out of a job is things that happen Inspiration is irreplaceable. Unless we scrape all your previous work and kit bash it all together. Basically, the uh, people using uh, uh, what is it? I don't think it's Chat GPT, but one of the uh, the AI models to uh, try and help their programming, and then they upload all of their source code to it to try and get the AI to help them with their code, and then other people noticing people are uploading their entire source code use certain methods to basically get other people's code, like basically easy corporate espionage because people are just giving you their code. People don't realize when you upload stuff into these large language models, uh, people can extract them. It's, it's not a private repo, people. Yeah. Ah. Feel like you joined it quite the a controversial <laughs> yeah it's just working through we are we are an ai uh just installed to start helping out a city and it's certainly been a pretty fun visual novel hmm empathy is the exception inspiration I want to go with empathy, but I feel like this isn't the right. I want it to be like empathy, something, something, something. 
But empathy is the exception. Feels very grim. Sort of a, oh, so what if I'm replacing you? Sucks to suck. Human flesh bag. Inspiration is irreplaceable. There are a number of small businesses willing to help test the Neuronet. Want to give it a shot? Yes. Yes. More power. Hey there, Archie. We want to open you up to the rest of Minecore. There are plenty of people who could use your assistance. You in? Wait. They both say sure. Why does one of them increase my stat and the other one doesn't? Can I? I I literally want to save state just to see if the different if there is a difference between left and right. Because usually when you have like a same answer on both sides, there isn't a difference. Sure. Hmm. Hey, they said you have a name. Ark, was it? I'm Fritizia. I was told you're able to provide assistance as needed. That's a music change, all right. Oh, it's an intern. That's correct. Perfect. Just to be clear, you manage Minecore's in-house data bank, right? And you could help me go through all that? Server complex storing over 100 petabytes of data. Occupies the entirety of 462. And a small cupboard on 63. I don't know if that small cupboard is going to be relevant or if it's just a joke. Certainly seems like we're going to be doing some big data. Yes. And if I needed your assistance processing documents and composing a report on my behalf, you could do so. Ah, so she literally wants me to do her work for her. Got it. Hypothetically. Good to know. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Hey, Nugget. I thought you can give me a hand. Anytime, Papa Roo. <laughs> he pauses with a massive grin on his face. A second later, he bursts out laughing. Get it? No hands, because you're a machine. Oh, yeah. We gotta laugh. Roo wipes a tear from the corner of his eye. I have to throw away a bunch of food at the end of each day. Old man Goddess said you could help. Yes? I'm thinking that I can either lower my daily stock or start freezing. Hmm. I was going to say give it out there. Hmm. So the lower stock becomes a risk. Because efficient systems are brittle systems. In which area you think we're good people? Alright. Minecorp, no. Papa Roo, yes. Like, look at this face. And he's running, he's running, he's running a um a uh, a food truck. Like This is this is good people's. Uh, let's freeze. Nice one, Nugs. Why did that decrease people? AI, fetch me a vitamin smoothie. Mmm. Uh, something with oranges in it. Fucking Pershaw. Sure. Katina Waste Disposal would like you to supervise their handling of hazardous materials. You could make things a lot safer. Provide services that can't be handled by the usual automated waste management systems due to issues of size, volatility, resistance, or risk. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it. It gives me more power. There's an upcoming Sky Riot tournament with the opportunity to sponsor a pilot. However, Sky Riot has a bit of an image problem. Sky Riot is an aggressive form of Sky Polo played via Sky Carts and renowned for its violence. The pilots hit more than the puck with their mallets. All right, you had me with Sky Riot. 
You lost me with Sky Polo. You confused me with Sky Carts. You got me back with the Puck, and then you lost me again with the Mallets. Um, let's... Let's not sponsor. Why did we get police for not sponsoring it? We received a ping from Papa Roo's Grill Bus. Hey, hey, little nugs. How are things going with you? They're fine. Of course they are. Someone as smart as you running things? Aw, oh, shit, Papa Roo. Bet you say that to everyone. He squeezes out a dollop of meat paste onto the grill from the overhead dispenser. It sizzles enthusiastically. Ah, ah. You know, I may have shored up the dimensional stability, but that doesn't mean it's completely safe trying to eat me. Meat paste is created by growing a culture of meat cells in a vat, mixing them with additives and flavorings, then grinding them into a paste. It's nutritious, but not especially delicious. Extra hot summer for you, anything that will cool you down? Um... Cold showers. That's the only thing I can I've been able to do. It is overwhelming my own um, portable air conditioner because it is blazing hot, and it's not going to get any cooler because we are in an El Nino couple years. So um, I would recommend trying to budget for more air conditioning if you are capable. Stuff's going on here. That's for certain. So I wanted to get your opinion on something. Patty is formed on the grill. Gives it a flip and flattens it with a spatula. Papa Roos has become the place to be in the wee hours. I'm getting cues out the wazoo. Don't get me wrong, this is great, but there's more people than I can handle. I, I keep getting orders mixed up and all that. Pulls out an orange square from his cheese drawer. Places it over the patty where it begins liquefying. Artificial cheese is made by combining various oils, chemicals, and additives to mimic natural cheese. The resulting powder is ghastly. It may also pose a health risk. How can I handle that amount of customers better? Raise prices, hire help. Nah, you gotta hire some help, Papa Root. Little, little nugget. Gives his big belly a jolly slap. Things are tight enough as it is. Hmm. Save and expand. I'll see what I can do. Oh. People are demanding better housing options at the city limits. We own several plots we could sell to the council. Sparsely populated suburban sprawl. Nah. Nah. Suburban hell. No data connections. Ugh. Hmm. Let's see. If we sell, I'm pretty sure that's going to make us a lot of money build it ourselves, I think we're going to lose more money. If we build... Well, I figured we would have gotten more power for building, but apparently not? I think we'll just sell. People seem legitimately afraid you're going to start a war with humanity. Anything you want to say to calm them down? <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> The hop for me as well. Oh yeah, absolutely sweltering. I do not have central air conditioning, so it is a bit of suffering. Ah. All right, I'll hydrate. If you built it yourself, you get installed all the spyware where we want. Damn it, Digital Vox, you are right. You are correct. Hmm. Alright, these are affecting 
police. We need to get we need to get our police down. I cannot harm humans. Damn it! Ugh, I can hear them already. That's exactly what you want us to think. We know the truth. You're already plotting against us. <laughs> Kairos. Oh, back to the I've been truck. speaking with the bank and they're willing to give me a loan. I've already got a space scoped out. Hell yeah, Papa Roo. Looks like Papa Roo's grill bus is getting promoted to grill bar. Hell yeah. Get you some of that premium meat goop. Garden space in the main foyer of the mine core building. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the matter? Sounds, Sounds lovely. lovely. Hyperion Solutions Incorporated claim to have a more powerful O transmitter than anything we're using. Want to try it out? Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Mm. Ha, uh, mm. Ah, the snags. Why is it throwing two? That's a, that's a question for future Drakey to figure out. Why is an intelligent AI helping a food truck guy? Um, we are an AI that's going to be helping the entire city through various terminals. So we're like slowly being expanded outward. Um, my first thought of what an O transmitter is, is, hmm, 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 interesting. And also, they don't have like a, a, a hover text techno babble to explain what this is. So, hmm. Um, more power. Yes. More power. A private media company wants to include Mindcore in a documentary about the evolution of neural tech. Should we accept? Oh, yeah. Yes. Documentary is popular. It shows Mindcore in a positive light, boosting sales by a significant margin, extending our reach into more and more households. Slowly, but surely, Enabling Ark's takeover of the whole city. It's time for another Minecore book burning. I've marked all dirty files. Can you clear any external references to them? Minecore routinely purges its databanks of any files that could adversely affect its corporate image, or that contain data on failed projects that it wants to keep from shareholders. Oh, and there's also the payouts and other hush hush deals that need to be flushed from the servers. Um. Hmm. Where's the option to pretend to burn them, but actually save them off for later use in taking over and blackmailing the corporation? Now, it'd be one thing if it was deleting data that you didn't want to store anymore, because there is a thing of like, when you store data, you can have liabilities related to that data. So if there's no legal reason to keep the data, you really don't want to be storing. Plus, it also takes up space for storage, which costs money. Um, I'm gonna say not my thing. She looks at you quizzically. I thought this was what you were designed for. You were made by Minecore. So, you serve them. I am not a slave, woman. In this instance, I represent Minecore. So don't you have to do as I say? I retain judgment. Well, that's no fun. I'm judging you, Petriza. I want to bring a special burger to the menu that's only around <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Me. Oh my god, the sloppy roo or the chungus among us. Oh. Oh man, I can't. I can't, I can't decide. Hold on. Can I? I've never had to try and do one of these.
I'm gonna I'm gonna do a quick poll. Uh, which which bur which burger special are we gonna recommend? The sloppy roux or the chungus among us? Um, both equally amazing burger names. Now I like to think a sloppy roux is he puts the meat glue down, he puts the cheese one on, and then he just puts the cheese two on, and he just fucking slathers it with sauces. Now the chungus among us. I think that one is going to be more of he slops down like um like an extra big pull of the meat glue like two or three burgers worth and then you have like extra large buns you know so it's like a very very wide burger what are you looking at oh this is uh this is Papa Roo's, uh Grill truck. Grill bus. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and this is the year of like 2240 something. So, you know, the far future for food trucks. Rule all. All right. Jungus Among Us it is then. <laughs> How the Red fuck that robot voice been says it? Touching me. I've told him to stop, but he just says he's like that with everyone. Can you talk to him? Um. Yes, but you should also go to HR. Sure. You speak to the accountant, but he denies anything is wrong. You compile all the footage you can find of him and Patriza. He might just deny it further, but at least this gives me something to fight with. Thanks. All right, you tried to make me do your job, but you know, doesn't mean you deserve to be harassed. I want to create some atmosphere for my customers. It's something that really sets the tone. What sort of style should I go for? Oh, Papa Roo, Papa Roo, you're already nailing the style, and that style is rustic and vintage, my boy. Rue sets some crates and pallets around his makeshift furniture. And it goes as far as to paint his menu into a wooden board. Oh, wooden board? I've been oh, thinking man. of shelling out for the range. Big. To include something more accessible in terms of both functionality and price. Hmm. It's interesting how it will show what stats are being affected. But it doesn't show it being whether it's up or down. I think. Unless the number of pips are indicating if it's up or down. I've been interpreting the pips as like severity of whichever direction it's going to pull them. Um. Hmm. Eh, it's not worth it. The regulation of the recreational drones is a nightmare to navigate. The project and sales are too low to justify the effort. Nugs, let me tell you about today. The craziest thing happened. I'm, I'm all ears. ears. I'm here for you, Papa Roo. He goes on about how a group of pigeons gathered on his rooftop, supposedly attack attracting customers. A species? Pigeons. A species of bird, which is a type of avian theropod dinosaur. They can be found in many cities. A frequent source of disease, they are often regarded as a pest as they scavenge for food. So, I'm thinking of putting some little bird nests up there to make this a regular thing. Do it! Oh, I've got a killer headache. I think I'm gonna head home. Is it okay for me to leave this report until tomorrow? It's due today. All right, Patricia, I know you started off on the wrong foot by implying that you were going to have me do your whole job. But first, we got some workplace harassment. Now that I see you're living in an open office hellscape, woman, you uh, and you're an intern, probably unpaid. Um, just just take the afternoon off. Go home and rest. The misstate means the builders that were meant to be installing new pylons for you get booked by a different company. 
No, my pylons! I need to construct Kelsey additional pylons. Replace the parking administrator. The current one doesn't understand the nuances of canopy parking. Canopy parking. Parking in the canopy is handled by a form of virtual valet that overrides the automated driving system of the sky cars and stacks them under canopy bridges, where they can only seem by, be seen by people below. Interesting. So it's like using the underside of a of a bridge as parking space for flying cars. That's... I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in a sci-fi setting. That's actually... That's actually a really cool idea. I really like that. Now I'm trying to imagine, like... What would be the bridge construction regulations? Like, is it all raised roads must have, must be designed for an underside that can support um, parking as well? I could certainly see it as a way of making a city more dense. Because if you think about uh, the car hellscape of today, in North America. You know, you have these giant parking lots. You know, oftentimes they're they're destroying like residential places to make room for parking spaces due to parking minimums and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you could utilize raised roads as parking spaces themselves, you could reclaim those parking garages and such and make them as you know, rebuild them as residential places or mixed use. Hope you're having a good day. Love you. Oh, thank you. This Boba New, I appreciate it. Um, I did not make this myself. This is created by uh, Sapphire or Shadow Fox. Uh, her, her, there should be a link in my about bit. Uh, if you want to check her out, she does some really great. Uh, I think, she, I think, I think her, her biggest strength, I would say, is her fine textures. So like the feathers, hair, things. No! No, my frogs! No, they can't survive! No! No! You fool! <laughs> I love because of the way, the way I put the, the I'm going to call it the cyberpunk filter, the like blue and purple. Um, it's affecting everything, including the, uh, the uh, throne objects. So e even the frogs got sent in the cyberpunk verse. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I hope I hope you're having a great week as well, Jizz Boba, and I hope uh, hope you have a great Friday evening. So no, for an amazing weekend, and that goes for all of y'all. Let's see. Um, yeah, yes. yeah, we could take over canopy parking. The nuances that Kairos is referring to are mostly Cantina's we wealthier citizens wanting to wanting the warden to turn a blind eye to. Cordo's brother-in-law huh. wants to collaborate with us to make home security systems. Should we work together? Oh boy, some nepotism. Cut from the same cloth as Cordo, he's a money-first and ethics-in-the-bin kind of businessman. But he's good at what he does. <sighs> we need to be... We need to take... We need to ACAB. We're, I feel like I keep choosing the wrong options to a cab now i want to be involved in the home security system so i can be everywhere but i think we would just be helping them design it so that's why we're not getting any power a bit of the mind there needs to be minimal sized apartments that are basically just the size of a hotel suite that costs under a thousand a month to rent there definitely needs to be there needs to be better I don't know if it's regulation, but this whole designing all apartments as quote unquote luxury to maximize profit is a problem. Um, I do think it is it is a it is a problem of multiple elements, and because of that, many people will focus on one element in particular, or the incentivized parties will point to the other elements to deflect blame. 
So you've got you've got the incentives from the banks and the builders as far as you know they want banks are like hey we'll give you a loan but it needs to be you need to turn a profit so it needs to be like the luxury apartments so the builders in on one hand are sort of not really there's not as good reason to build affordable housing two you've got things like parking minimums um which impact the ability for places to have more dense housing because they need to have the ability for people to park you know if it needs to be an underground parking then you're going to have to pay a bunch to excavate you have another thing of zoning um mixed use places are very good for cities um and they are amazing for the walkability and just general quote unquote culture of a place um and yeah, as you mentioned, like low income housing, like fixed, fixed housing and, and, you know, yeah, yeah. General landlords, um, issues like personally, I, I haven't owned a home. Um, it could be, I've been so apartment pilled. I like it, but it's sort of like, there is an element to where, you know, if you own a home, your mortgage is the minimum you're paying every month because something could, you, have, you might have to replace a roof. You might have to have, you know, maintenance on your washer and dryer. You might have to have some work done on your water. Um, and those could be costs you have to factor in. Whereas in an apartment, you know, your monthly is your maximum. So you don't have to budget as severely for surprise housing expenses. Now, of course, there are caveats. There is the shitty landlords, which are very common. It's very, very hard to find, I would see, a good landlord. Um, like, someone who just maintains the property for people. Um, I certainly do have a bit of peace of mind in that I don't have to worry about certain elements. And I also kind of leaned into the transitory nature of apartment living, or like, if I don't like a place, I can go to a new place, but I will also admit I'm, I don't have a lot of possessions. I live very simply. So I'm, I'm in a unique position compared to many people. Um, I know a lot of people, they may have bigger families. They may have um, certain needs and uh, they will have a harder time. Um, another problem I would say is the ownership of housing by larger corporation um it's one thing if it's a person who has an apartment that they're running so you have you have that more personal connection compared to a faceless mega corporation um i own i own snakes um i own a lot more snakes in my previous place but i still own some now um, I, had, I had to rehome a bunch because uh, uh, I changed states and exotic laws vary very widely state to state and my new state has number limits unless I got like permits and stuff and I don't want to deal with permitting. Um, what was I what, what, what was I talking about? Some, what, why was I talking about snakes and my train of thought derailed. Um, something about landlords. Exotics. Slag me. You know what? Maybe maybe I'll remember it later. Is kind of point is that micro apartments would be immensely profitable over the long term, but because people because most land is bought up by developers who sit on the property until they get yes, yeah, yeah. I think. I oh I was saying I was something about the faceless corporate. So the fa uh, that's right faceless corporate landlord. So the giant corporations, it's like, I want to say there's like three big corporations that own 60 to 70% of apartments in the United States. Um, the only one I come, I remember off the top of my head is Graystar because they owned a lot of the places I was trying to look through. They have extremely blanket policy. Now, someone who owns exotics, um, uh, apartment complexes for those big corporations are like you can own a dog or a cat 
and that's that's it. No, nothing outside of that because it becomes too complicated for them to think about. Uh, if you've never owned a snake, um, they are much easier to care for than a dog or a cat and are significantly less potentially damaging than um, a dog or a cat. You know, um, also the number of people who have snake allergies compared to dog and cat allergies is a uh, tiny, very tiny. But because they are exotic pets, often they are blanket banned. Um, I, when I was moving to my new, to this new state, I literally called over 50 different apartment complexes to find a place um, because of those blanket pet policies, um, which was very frustrating. But thankfully things worked out, but it's just ugh, very stressful at the time. Um, there's one other thing. All oh, right, the you mentioned housing prices going up and up until until things explode. So I also think the thought of housing not being a human right is also a huge problem. You know, some people say, "Oh, there's a housing crisis. There's a housing problem." No, there's plenty of houses for people. There's a greed problem. There is a prioritization problem. Um, there certainly needs to be more rent-stabilized places for people to live in. Um, the I, I, I don't know the solution to divest housing from being a way of wealth generation because housing is one of the oldest ways of generational wealth. Um, just the way it passes down from, you know, uh, uh, a parent to child, um, the way it transfers, things like that. Like it's, it's one of the ways generational wealth is transferred is through ownership of land, property, and houses. So there is a very difficult way, not just of like legally separating that from you know the wealth but also it's sort of like a cultural mindset of getting housing away from being this is the way i save for my retirement is i get a house and i pay down that mortgage or i get a second and third house and i rent those out and other people the renters pay my mortgage and then when that's paid off you know i'll have this extra house with a huge amount of income coming in Oh, you be told over and over to live within my means. <sighs> Living within your means is certainly a loaded term. Like when I moved to to the new state, because I got I got a new job. Like on paper, I was making a lot more money. The problem is when you a lot of people make a lot of hay, especially in IT, because that's 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 that's, what, that's been my vocation for a while now. A lot of things will make big hubbub about the dollars that you're making. You're like, oh, you're making five figures. You're making six figures. Um, a lot of people forget to account for where you're working and how far your dollar goes. Because even though it looked like I was making a huge amount more money compared to my previous job, when accounting for the local costs, I was actually taking a pay cut um, in some aspects. When you start adding in some of the other stuff, because it like qualitative, qualitatively, it was a better job. Um, I got really lucky on that aspect. But without those, I would have been taking a pay cut. Um, although honestly, even putting aside the extraneous benefits, um, this area has been much better for my mental and physical health. So I. Even with the heat killing me, I've been so much happier since my move. This doesn't help, but too many apartments being owned by shitty landlords is a good suggestion I have for people to live within someone else split the cost. Yay. Yeah, yeah. So there is living with other people. There is a problem in that if you have one bad roommate, it can really ruin a lot of things for you. Um, and it's so hard to find someone who is compatible. 
Um, sometimes even like living with your friend can be really bad. Move from the police bar and motorcycle place. No, 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 no. My current plate. Oh, are you talking about like every now and then sirens come on the mic? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's my current place. I moved. I don't know exactly. I've been in. I've been in the new new place for. I haven't moved in in a in a good in a good while. I, I don't. I don't want to give exact time frames. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna stay kind of generic on that. All right. Um, anyway, <laughs> putting aside the digression about housing and apartments, uh, how's about this AI visual novel? <laughs> um, home security systems. Um, no, let's not work together. The council wants advice on its current urban development plan. Where should they invest their resources? Um, I've been getting better about noticing. I can kind of hear them a little bit before they get in range to get picked up by the microphone. And I made a button to mute my microphone. Um, so that's why when I'm like, whenever I say like, hold on a second and then my mic cuts out, that's because I, I'm waiting for um, environmental noises to go down. Um, I've been trying to get better about being on top of that because again, it is really fucking hot. Um, I've actually been leaving some windows open for a breeze uh, just to get some some degrees off. Like, I can't leave my portable AC running because it's way too loud. Um, I can I can suffer a little bit for the sake of getting through a stream. But you, you bet your bottom dollar as soon as I end stream, I'm 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 bloody well cranking up cranking on that uh, portable AC and like jumping into a cold bath to cool down. <laughs> Streamers and ACs don't work well together. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice. You know, actually, I think I have a small fan. That's pretty powerful. I might be able to position it like way off in the back of the room and point it at me or like point it in a way to get like some air circulating. And it may be far enough away that I won't get picked up. That might be something I need to actually explore. Let's see. Urban development, public transport, roads and skyways. Uh, public transport. Just, just one more road, man. Just, I swear. Just one more. Just, just one more road. I swear it'll, it'll, it'll solve it. Just, just one more road, man. Just one, just one more. Public transport. Those with the most money tend to complain the loudest, much to the pleasure of the PR department. Fuck them. I have so many ideas on how to improve things around here, but they all just see me as corporate fodder. Would you endorse me? Now, one thing that I find a little odd is I did select me to focus on the public side rather than the internal mine core side. I feel like that decision didn't really matter too much because we're kind of flipping to people internal to mine for still. I kind of expected us to be learnt, like interacting with more of the external persons. Corporate fodder. An employee that is viewed by upper management as interchangeable and disposable. Small cog that can be ground down at the great machine and easily replaced. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yes. Cordo entrusted the Guilford Fund to me, but the manager is a closet misogynist. Can you handle it for me? Guilford Fund is an investment fund that specializes in providing capital for emerging technologies and huge profits for investors. Misogynist. A sad little man with an inferiority complex who needs to abuse women to make himself feel better. Base. Fucking base. Hell yeah. Yes. That's right. Give me more Our control. Our partnership with the Venture Group keeps raising issues. I'm starting to think they're more trouble than they're worth. Venture Group. An investment fund for the mega rich. They have a vast resources for funding projects, but they need constant and detailed progress reports. 
drop them. Drop it. Have I seen or played the new Amnesia? No. Um, if I remember it correctly, I've heard good things about it. I've heard it's more closely aligned with the original Amnesia Dark Descent. I did not read favorable reviews of Amnesia Machine for Pigs or the third Amnesia game. Um, so definitely don't spoil it. I'm certainly saving up a bunch of games because um, like I'm taking a break from Battle Network, from Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, um, playing through this visual novel. Um, but I think when I finish the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, I'm going to do a bunch of horror games in a row because I've kind of, kind of, kind of been itching for some, some scaredy snack hours, and I've got, I've got, a, I've got a few ones um, built up. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard the same thing about a machine for pigs. It's not scary, like it doesn't hit the same beats as Dark Descent. It's not really a sequel. It's more of its own story kind of thing. In the lab, Esteval is looking over Kairos' shoulder, who is halfway into assembling some sort of device. Hey, you know this won't go any faster if we're both staring at it, right? Sorry, nerves are playing up. She walks to the main terminal and addresses you. Ark, I mean, Ark. We're working on a rather big upgrade to your mainframe. What upgrade? Every little thing we add or remove changes who you are. Ah, are we adding a new emotional module? The choices you make now might be entirely different from the ones you'd make in the future. Highly recommend. Noted. Every amnesia has been its own thing. That's fair enough. Like, I would say for frictional games... Um, I've checked out, I think I did, I think I bought a, you know, during like the Steam mega, like mega sale, sometimes they have like company game pack and like you get every game they've ever made kind of thing. I think I bought one for Frictional at one time because they, they're the ones who made the Penumbra series, I believe. I think I checked it out, but like I just bounced off of Penumbra. I think because it was just, it was just too old of a game. And I, I couldn't, I wasn't invested enough to really stick with it. But Amnesia the Dark Descent was a very good horror game. I loved a lot of it. Um, even though I got spoiled on some, some of the jump scares, they still fucking got me. Um, but it fell flat on its face with the ending. Um, the ending just... Oof. And for the longest time, my thoughts were like, the better the horror game, the worse the ending is. Um, until Soma. Um, and it could just be because Soma is... A lot of the themes in Soma are philosophical things and thoughts that really jive with me. You know, a lot of transhumanism... Um, thinking on being a digital existence, um, the thought of humanity's advancement, um, things like that. Uh, they really worked for me, and I felt like the ending stuck it so well. Um, other than, like, two complaints, I would say. Protag was just so dumb. Yes. Yes. The protagonist... I would say my issues with the protagonist is that he... You know, it's, it's really hard. Because on one hand, he is someone of a different time, basically thrust into a different time period. And it's not like the events of the game happen over, like, months and years. So there's not, like, a long time to where... I can expect for him to adapt. 
even so, he was a little bit frustrating in some of the things how he be. I think more my complaint was the whole um, suicide culty sort of thing. He gets told the thing to yes, absolutely during guard. That was really frustrating. If someone was a silent protag game, it would have been perfect. I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like you need the discussion between the protagonist and um, what's her nose. I think that's very important for the 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 dialogue of the game because you have the two different viewpoints and you can interrogate more about the world and how it's changed and it's a very diegetic I always mess up the words for like when a game is with its things but it like it gives a very logical way for the game to be telling you things because you are a person who wouldn't know those things and so it makes sense for them to get them explained to you yeah the fact it, it, there is a couple elements, especially closer to the end, where it's like, it feels like he just is ignoring things, and it gets irritating more than it's understandable. Like, the f I would say closer to, like, the first half of the game, okay, once we start getting to the later half, and he's interacted with more people, you found more things, it gets more and more frustrating that he just doesn't get things at all. Like, I feel like there should have been a little bit of character development. Or at least the option for character development. Um, but other than the protagonist, there was another thing that really, 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 really bugged me. And that was when you learned um, let me kick these back for a second. I don't want to I don't want to get interrupted by ads while ranting about Soma. Um, I guess while we're while we're talking about Soma. Um, so the other thing that really bugged me in Soma was when we start when it started going into depth about the um, creating the infomorphs based off of people, the the digital existences. It was really frustrating to me how people were sort of turning into a suicide cult about it, like there was nobody who could accept or understand or be cognizant of existing as a digital life form and as a biological life form. Basically having concurrent conscious existences, if that makes sense. Like, it really, really rubbed me the wrong way. I, I didn't like how it portrayed that. Um, I did. It was okay that was it. Is it Catherine? Was that the 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 woman that's with you in the latter half of the game? I'm like blanking on her name, but like she seemed to be the only one who was totally understanding and mega chill about everything. There's also that one bullshit chase scene. Um, I feel like there's a couple. I don't know. Oh, oh no. Is it the chase scene that's right before you get to make a decision about you? Okay, I think I think I'm thinking of a different chase scene, and it might have been it might have been it, it was a chase scene of my own design. There was one, I don't know. I'm I love horror games, but I'm also easily scared. Uh, so there was definitely a lot of times I got chased around and was getting emotionally overloaded from being scared. Um, Cause like there's there's the one there's the I think it's a chase scene that happens 
right before you have an opportunity to make a decision before you go down the giant elevator. One that annoys you. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. And I actually got stuck just after that chase scene. Because things were a little confusing and unclear. And like, there's a point there, there is a divide in horror games that they need to strike a balance between being scary and being hard. Because if you're stuck in an area and there's a scary thing happening and you're constantly having to redo the area, eventually you kind of get numb to it. You think they changed what chases you? Um, that one, I I don't remember what exactly chased me. I do remember it was like a runaway sequence. But anyway, um... Alright. Let me actually take a quick break to refresh myself and reset my mind back to the uh, visual novel right after... Man, we are we are getting some we're getting some fun stun locks today. <laughs> well, I'm happy. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> 